and and kind of kick off our, our first session here. Um, and we really want to talk about um, mental health in, in the culture of our organizations. And this will be from a leadership perspective and talk about the, the implications of, of really having a culture um, that supports mental wellness. And it, it isn't just a feel good thing. I mean, it absolutely is meant to help people and help our colleagues, but it's also a strategic imperative for business. Um, I was reading recently, the United States Chamber of Commerce has done quite a bit in this area, especially through their foundation. Um, and they have found that it, you know, depression, anxiety, feelings of isolation and hopelessness, not only plague productivity and work quality, but they can really have an impact on your employee morale and that shared sense of purpose that they have in working for you. So retaining clients, I mean, well, clients, but also employees is key um, in, in maintaining a positive culture um, that supports mental health. So that's the, the driving reason why we're doing this. Um, we do have a few takeaways that we want you to, to, to have today. Those are to take care of yourself. It all starts with you. We've got to be mindful of how stress impacts us and how we demonstrate how we are dealing with it and how we're talking about it. So it's a leadership imperative for each of us to be thinking about ourselves and taking care of ourselves. We've got to eliminate the stigma that is the, the leading cause of why a culture in an organization um, does not support mental health. So eliminating the stigma, we'll talk about that. And just be clued into resources that are available. We have resources on our, we, we have a, a whole section of our coronavirus um, resource center. You can access that directly from the vscpa.com homepage. And you can see a, um, a part of that resource center is all about wellness and mental health support and resources. So, so know where to go. Um, one disclaimer, as we get started, as you all know, I'm not a health professional um, and this is not considered professional medical advice. Um, I am talking from a leadership perspective and um, you know, leader in this organization and I've often said that as a CPA, whether you are a sole practi practitioner or you lead you know, thousands, um, we're all leaders by virtue of, of being a leader um, in our communities with our clients um, and just being that trusted advisor that this is uh, a topic that I think all of us needs to be um, versed in and, and, and understand some basic principles about. So that's where we're coming from. And just wanna talk a little bit about why now? Why are we doing this? Um, and it really, mental health and wellness has, has been a, um, an imperative for, for the profession for many years. Um, it probably in the last couple of years, we've seen more and more discussions about it, um, at, probably at the largest firm level. But after 2020, I have heard more and more and more discussion about how we're dealing with mental health and wellness. And, and we all know why, um, you know, we're all locked down. Our norms have been shattered. You know, we are dealing with isolation at a level that we've never experienced before, or many of us haven't. Um, we have a fear, a real fear of our, our well-being and our health, you know, with this virus, it's, it's invisible, it's, it's scary, you know, I, it is absolutely going to cause more stress and more concerns among people. You know, that coupled with the social unrest that we've seen this year, the tax season that we had that did not go, you know, never ended basically, all of the new regulations, the laws, the CARES Act with the PPP just added so much more work and new 
deadlines and new pressure for our members. Um, and then, you know, I can go on and on and on, you know, talking about school, our children, um, and the dealing with their being um, out of school and at home. Um, the just, um, you know, dealing, I'm personally dealing with my aging parents um, and worrying about them and not only their health and contracting the virus, but their, their isolation. Um, so, so much that we're dealing with that this is such an important time to, to start educating ourselves and learning more. Um, I am hopeful, you know, 2021 hasn't started off great, <laughs> as we all know, um, but there are some, some, some signs that, that this will end soon, this virus, um, and we just need to, um, you know, continue to help each other get through this. So let's um, look at some of the data um, there's a lot of data out there now um, that is showing how our, our, our mental health is being impacted this year. Just since last year, 27%, there, there's a drop in 27% of 27% in self-reported mental wellness in, in the workplace. So in just since last year, almost a third of our employees are saying that I have felt a drop in my well-being and my mental health. And this was across all segments of the population. So we are seeing, you know, probably that there's more significant um, impact on those who are more vulnerable, you know, those who certainly have income insecurity um, and those who have been impacted physically by the, the pandemic, but just in, in, in everyone and across the population, we're seeing an, a severe impact. Um, we're also hearing that nearly 50% of employees are reporting to have less energy and less interest in socializing with their friends, more trouble sleeping, um, probably a lot more than probably are reporting a, an increase in alcohol use and even abuse um, and other types of substance abuse. So we're really seeing um, the data is showing that this is having an impact on our people. So if, if you've seen any impact and um, you know, share with others on, you know, in the, in the chat. Are you seeing it? Yes, no. Um, are you seeing this kind of impact um, either in yourself or in colleagues in your, in your, um, in your workplace? So I'm, I'm seeing a lot of yeses, one or two no's maybe, but um, maybe a little bit looks pretty solid more of the yeses there. So it sounds like uh, uh, even more so in the last week. Uh, I'm, I'm actually feeling more so in the last week. I just watched the news this morning and I just had this feeling of just heaviness. And, you know, it, it's, 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 it's taking an impact. It's taking a toll. Um, so this statistic is, um, comes from Unum, and the National Alliance on um, mental, uh, mental Institutions. I'm looking for my notes here. Um, but they say, so when we're looking at, you know, National Alliance on Mental Illness, sorry about that. They report, um, and this goes to stigma, eight out of 10 employees will not seek care for a mental health issue because of stigma. So this is probably the, the biggest problem that, that I've read about in, in preparing for, for this talk and in talking with others um, is just that it's, it can come in two forms. The stigma can be how your employees generally talk about mental health challenges or talk about someone. 
So if it's in a negative way that people in your organization or in your groups talk about mental health and people who are suffering from it, then that, that is a stigma. But then there's also how an employee may feel a fear of how they will be perceived um, is also a stigma. So we've got to focus on both of these um, and we'll talk about that as we go through. So just want to start with you. Got to start with ourselves. Um, you, you've probably heard, I know if you've been on an airplane, you've heard that you've got to apply your oxygen mask before assisting others and kind of keep that in mind when we're talking about stress and dealing with stress and, um, and working in an organization. We have to be mindful of how we are feeling ourselves. And as a leader of an organization, be mindful of, of how the stress impacts you. So take that time to check in with yourself and be honest with yourself. And if you're not feeling right, be, um, be ready and prepared to talk with someone about how you're feeling. Um, you know, we, before, again, before we can help our, our others, we've got to be open and understand how we're feeling. And then we've got to model those behaviors. So as a leader, we need to be able to say, I'm not feeling well, and I am dealing with the stress, and it is hurting, and it is impacting me, and it's okay to talk about it. Um, so if you model that openness and that willingness and um, begin to, to dissipate that stigma and how people talk about it, people are going to look at you and see how you're talking about it before they're going to see if it's okay to, to talk about it in a, in a healthy way. Um, we also need to lead with compassion. Um, so when we are encountering, you know, staff who seem to be struggling, um, who are saying, I'm struggling, that's a sign, that's a very clear sign um, that, that you need to listen um, and that we need to be flexible when dealing um, with our staff who are dealing with significant stress. We need to, you know, really think about how are we allowing people to flex their work um, at this time, you know, this, and it may be more people, you know, when we've got our, our teens who are, have children at home and they're teaching kids math and trying to do their work. Um, be open, you know, think about some creative ways to be able to help your teams deal with this. And, and remember that compassion. We also need to take care of ourselves. So when we're looking at ourselves and we're listening to how stress is impacting us, let's you know, really focus on what good habits are we, are we not only doing and making the time to do, but also demonstrating to your team that this is important, that self-care is not selfish. You know, if you need to flex your time so you can get in the gym in the morning, then you need to do that. Um, you've got to think about that physical health. So when I think about making sure I'm okay and modeling behaviors, I, I'm thinking about how am I physically taking care of myself? And this is hard to do. I know it's hard to do but you've got to, you've got to do it. You know, I turned 52 last year and it was, a, it was one of those moments where I'm like, it's either I'm going to keep not exercising and not taking care of myself, or I'm going to start exercising. And it, it's just like saving money. I think it's an investment in you, your ability to continue to show up every day to earn a living and to be there for other people. So get that exercise, drink your water, eat healthy, you know, get those checkups. That's something that I didn't do last year, but I just, you know, made a bunch of appointments. Get, go to the eye doctor, get your annual checkup, get your blood tests done, make sure you're okay. 
and it and talk to your doctor you know think about what you can do to be on that track to make sure your health is going to be in place and don't feel guilty about it be positive about it and like with everything you've got to forgive yourself if you're not doing it you know it's if you slip up you know you've got to take a week to feel sorry for yourself about it and then just say okay I'm going to change my mind and and get get started again and there are also little things that you can do and please put in the chat what you do to make sure that you're you're being, you know, taking care of yourself. Um, gather strength from others, you know, do some Zoom calls if you can't gather with your friends. Have that social network. Um, those are the things that, you know, really will help people live longer and, and, and have a healthier life is if you have those people that um, are there to help you. All right, so stigma. Um, I mentioned this can, can be about how people talk about wellness and mental health, and then also how people internally feel about it. To eliminate stigma is, is probably one of the biggest things that we can do as an employer to help our employees um, deal with mental health and well-being. Don't be afraid to talk about it. And as leaders, it's got to start at the top. Um, leaders have to openly say, we support um, our employees' mental health and, and wellness um, and have conversations and make sure that your teams aren't, you know, flippantly talking about mental health as a weakness or uh, a, a sign that anybody is less than or, they can't handle the pressure of the job or things like that. We've got to start eliminating that from our everyday uh, conversation um, and not be afraid to say mental health, you know, or depression or anxiety, you know, these are what a lot of people are dealing with, but they're afraid to talk about it. So let's start to kind of eliminate the, the negative stigma that's attached to it. And when I was looking through some information from the US Chamber of Commerce, they, they, got, they brought together a lot of information about veterans. And we look at veterans and many of them come back from combat with PTSD. And they are not weak people, you know? I think they have shown courage and strength in ways that so many of us haven't. And yet so many of them are dealing with the severe type of, of mental problem. Um, so it, it, we've got to eliminate that this means that people are weak or, or not, um, not as, as good as others. Um, other things that we can do, share resources. Um, remind employees regularly that we have resources, that we want to encourage people to use the, the benefits that you have. You know, and speaking of benefits, brush up on your benefits. You know, I think many companies are looking at, are there some alternative or new benefits or um, other types of um, health um, plans or policies that can better address more of the mental health um, as well as our physical health. Something that I've heard a lot about recently is providing mental health first aid training to your teams. We have not done this, but we are in the process of looking into it. I know that many local health departments, the Virginia Department of Health um, has uh, programs. It's like CPR training. So if you have people on your team who have CPR training, especially like here when we have a lot of people normally coming into our building, we, we do CPR training. Well, we need also do mental health first aid and make sure that we can spot issues and, and problems quickly so that we can um, best take care of our people and our guests who enter our building. So look out for, for more from us here at the VSCPA. We want to help 
our members look for, for resources in mental health first aid. And really create a culture of connection. Um, and that means having check-ins. You know, we're in this virtual world. You've got to set up one-on-one, -on -one, face to face meetings with your teams, talk to people, check in with them. How are they going? And, you know, not just a work meeting, but how are you doing meeting? Um, I, I did that earlier in the pandemic. I need to do it again. Um, it's been several months, but it, it, it was a, a great use of my time, I felt. Um, to make sure that I'm checking in and having some, some connection and showing, and, and it really was creating a culture of connection amongst our team because that's how we're gonna support each other, you know, is if we're here for each other and people know we've got a team that's, that's there for us. And, you know, I also in my reading, I, I have found that a lot of people don't realize how bad they're doing until somebody asks them. You, you feel like you're just dealing with this pressure and this stress and it's like, okay, I'm, it's, I'm used to it now. But, but it starts, if it gets worse, it starts to show. People start to notice you're, you're not as happy, you're not as outgoing, you're not as peppy as you were. And if we're isolated and we're not having that visual, you know, looking at each other face to face, we may miss some of these signs. So I really wanna encourage that we reach out, encourage your teams to reach out and talk to each other. Um, and I think he, he feels that we need to begin to eliminate that, that expectation that you have to be stoic and that you need to um, just be able to grin and bear it, I think is, is a way he, he, he talks about it. Um, and that the silence, you know, and I think, you know, just in many aspects of our culture, but maybe um, often in, in CPA cultures, that, you know, that silence is a part of that stoicism. It's like, you know, I, I might be dealing with something, but I can't bring it up at work. I can't talk about it at work. And that fear that we talked about with the stigma and that fear of, of being a failure or not being a strong person and strong enough uh, because you're feeling a lot of stress. So he, he does talk about depression um, and I'm, some of the uh, aspects of depression that, that, he, that he discusses, I've got on this slide here um, and we really need to understand that it, it is common, you know, and that there are different levels, um, but, you know, it can be increased by, you know, for people who are more vulnerable in our society because of unemployment or poverty or life events that have happened to them. But it, it really is a, it, it can be anguish and it can be debilitating for people if they can't um, get the help that they need. And untreated depression can be extremely devastating and even lead to suicide. Um, so we need to be mindful of, of how, um, how desperate people may be in silence and, and that effectiveness of, of reaching out and saying, are you okay? And seeing if somebody is really looking like they're not okay. And being mindful enough of how your team is doing and how they normally are and how that might've changed um, and, and not being afraid to, to take that step and asking them how they're doing. And you know, I wanted to put in here just if you are feeling depressed, you know, you know, we talked about really understanding how you're feeling and being honest with yourself and talking to someone can really, really help you realize that what you're feeling is not your normal. It's not that, oh, you know, I'm just used to this weight on me, but really talk about it and talk with somebody that you trust and, and make sure that, that you've got an outlet, um, with people um, to talk to. 
talk to your healthcare provider, seek professional help. Um, you know, a lot of these things that we talked about earlier about wellness, you know, can really help your mental, your men, how you feel mentally. I, I am a firm believer in exercise, you know, really helping how your mental outlook is. And I know I've had bouts with depression and anxiety and needed help. And I know that if I exercise, it helps me. And I do, I am able to kind of keep things in check. So I wanted to, to also mention, um, I'm sorry, I forgot to show you this slide. This was the slide we were talking about, just about talking with somebody and seeking that help. Um, but I also wanted to just mention um, Tommy Raskin. Um, you may have heard this. This is a story that just came out last week. Um, it was Maryland Congressman Jamie Raskin's son, Tommy Raskin, took his life on New Year's Eve. Um, and Congressman Raskin and his wife wrote a, a tribute to their son um, that came out early last week. And Tommy was successful. I mean, he was a young, uh, young person, but he had had a lot of success in his life. He went to Amherst College and Harvard Law School. He was a published writer, a teacher, an animal activist. Yet he faced this serious, extremely serious depression. And I, I just bring this up. It's just so heartbreaking, but it's, I think his parents, who he was, and that this can happen to anyone. I mean, it really can Im impact people who on the outside seem to be so successful and have everything and it's so happy. Um, and I just, you know, this is, it was so heartbreaking to read what he, a note he left. And he said, please forgive me, my illness won today. Please look after each other, the animals and the global poor for me. All my love, Tommy. And that just really, I just, it's heartbreaking, but I think it, it, it's something that we need to know is real and, and can impact any, any of us. So let's take this seriously and really let's look out for each other. It's all about, you know, we're in the people business. It's about taking care of each other about helping each other. You know, I have spent so many years talking about artificial intelligence and technology and how all of that is doing so much work for CPAs and it's changing our worlds. And But we're still human beings and we're still have the flaws that human beings have, but we have the amazing capacity that you can't get from a machine. And that is to reach out to each other to be there, to connect with each other, to be happy for each other and, and just um, help each other through this really tough time. So I'm gonna end with um, just a, a brief story um, about taking care of each other. Um, this is Doris, Doris Pennington. She is on our staff here at the VSCPA. Um, Hopefully, maybe you've talked to her um, when you call. But she decided um, late last year, um, probably in November, December, that she wanted to talk to everybody on our staff. Um, she just felt that she needed to have a conversation. Um, so she, she called everyone on staff and just asked how they were doing. Um, she, she tried to get me a few times and of course I was busy. I was in meetings and, you know, I kind of didn't immediately call her back and, and I, I feel bad about that, but you know how life gets ahead of us. Finally, she called me early one morning and said, Stephanie, do you have time to talk? And I, I just picked up the phone and I called her or she had texted me and I called her and I had, I had no idea how badly I needed Doris to, to call me and to talk to me and just to ask me how I was doing. I mean, this was in the midst of 
holidays and this pandemic and just dealing with um, so much of our busy season. And, you know, it, it was, it just hit me um, when she asked me how I was doing and I was in tears. Um, and I, from what I understand, I don't think I was the only person who ended up in tears when Doris called. Um, and all she did was ask me how I was doing. And it just was a great um, release and opportunity to just be me and be human and connect with another human. So I can't stress enough how important it is just to reach out to somebody and talk to them. We all need it. And, you know, we, we just need to be there for each other. We all need to get a little bit of Doris in us to help each other um, in this crazy time. But we will get through it because we are a community here at the VSCPA. Um, and I'm proud of that. And I'm proud that we're talking about these topics and that we've come together. And we have so many people on this program today. And I just wanna thank all of you. Thank you for being here for me, you know, when I need it. Um, many of you have been there. Um, hopefully we've been there for you. Um, and we'll just, we'll just keep, keep doing what we're doing and um, just be a little bit more mindful of, of how we're taking care of each other. So with that, thank you.